my name is Kate. I weigh and measure three meals a day from the gray sheet. I commit them to my sponsor on time. I don't eat in between no matter what. And abstinence is the most important thing in my life. And I'm so excited to be here. You know what the truth is? I never want to come to a meeting. I never want to come to any meeting. I never have 18 years. I never go, you know what I want to do? Go to a meeting. You know who always wants me to go to a meeting? My husband. Uh, I have a meeting that I go to every week. And he's like, whoo, I can't wait to, I can't wait to get after meeting Kate. Uh, Cause he knows, right? Like he, it's my therapy and that's what he calls it. He's very funny. Um, uh, so my husband is not a gray sheeter, but he is absolutely 10,000% a gray sheet husband. I picked him when I had uh, like seven years of abstinence, right? Cause we've been together for 11 years now. Uh, definitely highly recommend picking things abstinent anything, all kinds of things, you just do a better job. Uh, so I will say that I come from a fat family and a big family. I come from a large Irish Catholic, really mean, physically large family. Um, I was the sensitive one in the family. Uh, over Christmas, my mom was bringing up some, like, my mom was bringing up what a difficult child I was because, because she's an active food addict and it was indeed the Christmas spirit. Uh, so she's, you know, like telling stories about, remember that teacher that used to drive, you used to drive crazy because you were so willful. And I was like, oh, you mean, cause I was a 14 year old girl with opinions, right? And, and, you know, my stepfather is like, yes. And my mother's like, you were so difficult. And then, my mother starts explaining to me that her brother, who was my biggest bully my whole life, is having a very difficult time because his grandchild is incredibly sensitive and cries all the time. And she wants me to be sorry for him. When I tell you the self-righteous indignation like oh you mean he is being tormented the, by the person essentially that he tormented and I'm supposed to be sad and she was so angry at me she was so angry at me and she said but we've already discussed what a difficult child you were right so now she is blaming me because her angry cranky food addicted, gastric bypass having, whatever, never dealt with his addiction. She wants me to feel sorry for this man. This man tormented me my whole life. I'm getting a little, I've been very emotional lately. Uh, whatever, it is what it is. I'm emotional. I cry, it turns out. By the way, that family was the family that I was shamed for crying when they abused me. I was the problem. And she said to me then, after we've had all of this conversation, well, you never did want to come to see my family anyway. And I had this thought that as soon as I was 18, I avoided it as soon as I could. And as soon as I got abstinent, I never fucking did it again. I never went back to them again. I went in there abstinent. They made fun of me. They made fun of my food. One, my aunt, who is still fat after her gastric bypass, and this is, I have no problem with fat people. Uh, fat phobia is not a thing that I wanna play with, but you look at me, you look at my delicious abundant food and you say to me, better you than me? I'm not coming back. I'm not coming back. Abstinence has taught me my side of the street. The other thing that abstinence taught me was what's everybody else's side of the street. I don't have to clean your side of the street. I don't have anything to do with your side of the street. My mother and I have a relationship at all because I am abstinent. We have a relationship because 
I am abstinent. And she is not. And I can go to Christmas and be told what a difficult child I was. And restraint of pen and tongue. And no, what is my side of the street? That is abstinence. So like there's one of my favorite things is um, obviously it's not only abstinence, it's abstinence and then the program, right? Like one of the promises of this program is that we will understand how to deal with issues that used to baffle us. It turns out a lot of these issues can be not baffling because I walk away. But there's another side of that too. I am very happily married to an amazing man who was a emotional and physical and monetary provider for his family until I showed up. A lot of those people did not like me. They did not like me. Uh, or they didn't like how much he liked me. Uh, those people I can't walk away from. They're his. They're not mine. One of my favorite things. So the best things about abstinence are very personal for me. They are guilt-free eating. They are not hating my body 24 hours a day, seven days a week, even in my sleep, worrying about who's looking at my butt. They are being like living in the world without constantly, like it's, it's not so meta, right? Like I'm not constantly wondering what it is about Kate, right? Like it used to, oh, like I had a, I had a, uh, one of those like, you know, cameras that like comes in, woo, you know, constantly everywhere. I don't live that way anymore, right? Like these are the best parts of abstinence for me. The most useful parts of abstinence, however, are really the ability to communicate my needs, uh, the ability to hear someone else's needs, the ability to be in, I always say that abstinence really is the PhD of relationships. This is not, you know, uh, I love novels, right? Like I probably listen to 130 audiobooks a year. Literally, that's not an exaggeration, right? Like I'm obsessed with stories. Um, and I especially love complicated stories. I love it. You know, my favorite series, the man who murders her father becomes her father and raises her for the rest of the book series, right? Like it's a fascinating relationship. It's a complicated relationship. I love that in literature. It's terrifying in real life and nobody's murdered anybody, right? Like real life is terrifying. Uh, and I have the tools that I have because number one, I put my food on the scale, but then also number two, I do these like steps. I always used to say that I got that, that everybody else seemed to get the manual and I didn't, right? Like when I went through life, I thought, how'd you get the book to know how to do this? I didn't know how to do anything. And then I got abstinent and I got a book. Oh, and it took me years to even look at the book, right? I just wanted to get my food under control, which is great, which is great. And it was good enough and it worked. It like, it was enough for, for four years to have my food under control. Uh, but then I needed something else. It was, it was too much to just keep my food under control. So I got the book. And here's this like, and this is what you do, right? Like number one, you figure out that you can't control your whole life. Number two, you figure out that if you let go, you know, somebody else can help you. Number three, you turn it up, right? Like they're like, so here's the book. And then I realized that nobody else actually has a book. Like, oh, most of these people that I thought had it all together, they are more of a wreck than I ever was. I was looking for something at least. 
I was looking for something. I was, we were on a, I was on a meeting uh, the other day and somebody was talking about uh, how like, you know, they were, they were doing cocaine and still, you know, eating and gaining weight. And I like, absolutely. Like I was doing everything. Like drugs didn't stop me from eating. Smoking didn't stop me from eating. I was doing all the things like that is how big the hole was right like drugs and food and cigarettes and self-righteous indignation and whatever like none of it like none of it was gonna fill that hole uh and then it turns out that like i could live with the hole by weighing and measuring for some years and then I could actually start to fill the hole. Oh my God. Like the idea that the hole could be filled in retrospect five after minutes left. five minutes left. Thank you. I appreciate it. In retrospect, nothing had ever even started to fill the hole. And now I'm like making headway here. That was crazy, right? Um, so one of the things that I talk about in, so 18 years, right? So on January 2nd, I celebrated 18 years of back-to-back -back accidents. Absolutely amazing, super exciting. And one of the, the quote unquote problems of being abstinent is that you don't get to not grow. You don't get to not grow. Like you don't get to be stagnant, even if you want to, even if you're like, right here is great. I could be here forever. You really can't. It doesn't actually work that way. Um, and I realized for the past several years that um, that my January 1st has uh, set the tone of the entire year, whether or not I meant it to. Uh, in 2022, I fell down the stairs and was literally injured or sick for the entire 365 days. Um, 2023, uh, I was just starting to feel better and starting to lose weight and change the shape of my body. And I have, my entire body has changed from, you know, January 1st of 2023 to December 31st of 2023. So I decided this year that I was going to make a point. If I, if it's going to do it anyway, going to be a little intentional about it. Um, so I decided that this is my year of peaceful, purposeful, joyful creation. And the purposeful is great. And the joyful is great. And the creation is great. But the peace is kicking my ass, people. And I've started to realize that I have lived in brain chaos. I, I, when I went back, I looked and it's since 2020. It's since 2020. Can I pinpoint the day? No, but COVID was hard and things changed and everything went crazy. And I stopped trying for the peace. So then I spent a week changing the channel and being terrified, right? Like, oh my God, oh my, oh, okay. Calm down, calm down, calm down. And I get myself peaceful and within seconds, woo! And now I'm terrified, right? Like, am I just gonna be crazy for the rest of my life? Because, you know, God forbid, right. Because I'm an addict and then I have a flat tire. I don't call AAA, I call the suicide hotline, right? Like that's just, you know, like that's not how. Uh... So here I am changing the channel over again and changing the channel over again. And I'm gonna get a little emotional. I start to have emotional, personal life breakthroughs, right? Like start to understand like what there really is for me above and beyond what I think I can have. I start to have this like um, epiphany that that my dream, that the life even beyond this life, which is absolutely a life beyond my wildest dreams, is in the stillness. That's one and, minute. Thank you, one minute. And I am terrified of stillness. I am terrified of success. I am terrified of being bigger and better and greater. Because guess what? The reward for great work is always more work. 
So here I am crying, but the truth is I have the best life I have ever had ever in my 46 and a half years. 18 years of abstinence is the greatest thing that could have ever happened to me. It has me have a husband. By the way, my husband is the crush of my life. 12 year old Kate would never in a million be years believe that she got to marry Paul O'Malley, right? Um, and so really a life beyond that little girl's wildest dreams and it's only getting better. So here I am weighing and measuring. It hurts a little. It's difficult a little, but it is the greatest thing that ever happened to me. And I am so grateful for all of you for my 18 years of a life beyond my wildest dreams. And I hope all of that for all of you. I love you all. I don't even matter what.